The UK's top spy warns a new terror threat could be brewing. The head of MI5 said uprisings in the Middle East have created a new militant training camps. Up to 200 extremists from the UK thought to have joined forces with heavily armed terror groups in Yemen, Somalia, Libya, Syria and Afghanistan. I'm now joined by Dr. Franklin Lamb, a Middle East peace activist, for some perspective on this. So Western countries supported what they called a move toward democracy in Arab countries. But now, according to Britain's top spy, some of these states could be turning to terrorist training grounds. Is that exactly what London and its allies were bargaining for? Well, uh, taking the case of Libya, uh, where uh, it was a rush to enter um, and to topple the regime, I think that was a classic mistake. I spent uh, four months there, got to know a number of the different factions, um, and, and it was clear that al-Qaeda was there. Uh, in some cases, they were training the same militia uh, that the British were training. Uh, and the Americans and the French were training. So uh, when there's an opportunity, Al Qaeda is going to be there, and they took it. And now they're joining; they're increasing their ranks. Two months, uh, three months ago, the, at a, a congressional hearing, a CIA analyst told the, the Congress that there were 300 maximum Al Qaeda in Syria. Now they estimate there's 3,100. They're coming in from Jordan. They're coming in from the Gulf Council, uh, uh, Cooperation Council. Uh, countries are coming in from Lebanon and Turkey. So because NATO got this thing going in Libya, uh, there was this opportunity, and Al-Qaeda will respond to an opportunity, and that's what we're seeing now. But there may be a little panic by the uh, intelligence in UK about uh, them coming and attacking the Olympics. Who knows what evidence they have of that? But there's no question, even here in Libya, Al-Qaeda is growing and is active. And they're, and they're well-trained. Now, what do you think pushes people inside Western countries to become radicalized and join the militant movement? There have been a few high-profile people who could fit that category recently. Well, I think there's a lot more uh, that we don't know about who haven't made it public. Um, uh, you mentioned earlier that uh, uh, terrorist training camps, well, of course, that's one point of view. Are they terrorists or are they liberators? And, you know, they have a strong program, a strong ideology. But my, my point is why they even exist is either you know, to, uh, for dignity and to overthrow some dictators. But when you've got an operation like NATO of slaughtering civilians in Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iraq, of course, uh, it's going to uh, activate them and give them the opportunity. Uh, as you know, Al Qaeda has urged, its leadership has urged uh, of people to go to Syria and get training and go to southern uh, uh, Turkey and also in Libya. Libya has become a major training center and I saw that as a fact and I with mixing with some of the rebel militia against Gaddafi they used to say one Al Qaeda fighter is worth 10 of us. We admit that and they're worth six of Mutasim Qaeda special forces. They're very well disciplined. Rather than lecture people, they go out there and they show them how to, how to do something, and they're, and they're very effective. So I think their threat is real, their numbers are growing, their competence is well known, and I, I do think there's a problem. Now, Islamists have come to power recently in Egypt, and the country was one of those named by yeah. Britain's security service chief as being at risk of turning into a place where al-Qaeda has training grounds. Do you think the West should be concerned with the direction that Egypt is taking? Well, frankly, uh, no, not particularly. I think what we see in Egypt is, believe it or not, a government that represents the majority of the population. I think for the first time in uh, e Egyptian history, it was a democratic election. So I, I respect the will of the people. I spent quite a bit of time in, uh, in uh, Egypt, and there are concerns about the brotherhood. Do they keep their word, for example? But um, uh, the uh, Mercy, uh, Mohammed Mercy, uh, it seems to be very sophisticated, as the brotherhood has been at playing the political game. So I think there's going to be some consequences th that the West doesn't like. I think we're frankly going to see the end of the Camp David agreement. I don't think the Israelis who are now complaining that they can't even rent an office for their embassy 
are going to have much luck in the future. Not because just of the brotherhood, but because those values are greater and deeper and broader than the brotherhood. They represent the Egyptian people. Uh, Camp David was a sellout. It was a private contract between the Americans and the Mubarak family and their associates and the Israelis. That doesn't reflect the view of one Muslim or one Arab that I know or anybody of goodwill who's, who wants peace in the Middle East. So I think we're seeing a fundamental change, but I wouldn't put it on Al Qaeda. I think the Arabs are awakening. They're standing up. Islam is, is rising. And uh, we see that here in the Middle East. We see that in Lebanon. The Americans are, are, are diminishing. The Iranians are increasing. You see that all over in every aspect, from who's buying real estate, who's organizing for the next campaign, who's doing the training, who's supplying the arms. Uh, you know, it's a new era. It's the era of resistance uh, that uh, we're, we're entering, uh, and, and things are going to be different. All right, we have to leave it there. Franklin Lamb, Middle East peace activist, thanks very much for your insight.